free tip Friday vibe, which is casual. And uh, I've got a lot to share with you. I'm feeling super creative. I'm also not feeling very centered here. I think I need to move more that way. Let me do that. There we go. I'm a little more centered in the camera. That looks good. And I can see myself there. I can see me. I can hear me. There we go. Turn that volume down. And let me make sure that I can see everybody over on our YouTube. And it looks like I am live. It looks like you guys can see me. So give me a shout out over on YouTube if you guys can see me over there. I did kind of a new thing where I scheduled it. So yep, yeah, it looks like that you're watching there. I see you guys there. Okay, I'm all set. Well, it's great to have you guys here on this Friday. Um, I hope that you are ready for a fun, creative uh, little session here. You know, I had such a good time this past Wednesday with Janice um, on our regular Wednesday Bean Shop Live episode. It was really fun. And we did, as you know, the um, kimono cord wrap, one of which I'm wearing. I finished the one that I was doing on air. So I'll show you guys that um, a little bit uh, a little bit closer, a little bit closer when I move the camera. Um, it's great to have everybody here. I'm seeing everybody here over on YouTube. I'm seeing here everybody over on our Facebook feed. Everyone from all over, great to have you. Of course, we have as beadshop.com, we have um, uh, Gita uh, moderating from across the miles in Denmark. And Janice is um, enjoying some time with friends today. So we don't really have a moderator over on our YouTube channel. Um, so I'm going to keep my eye on it and make sure I've got, uh, looking at some questions, but if anybody wants to do any linking or anything over there, feel free to do that. If you need, if you want to link over to our bead shop products, um, that would be great. Um, but I will keep an eye on it. I see that my mom is there, my mom and dad, a big hello to you guys. I can't wait to see you guys next week. Um, I also wanted to mention, we got the, uh, episode notes that were up. Um, for our Vintage Finds episode, uh, speaking of parents, when Chris's uh, dad was here visiting uh, for us, um, I realized that we'd never actually posted those episode notes. So those are up both on the project under Facebook Live or Bead Shop Live, and I also posted them into um, the Bead Table group. So if you missed downloading those, go ahead and download those. So, um, We've got a lot to, as I keep saying, we've got a lot to discuss, so I'm gonna show you guys what I've got over here. But I did wanna mention, um, on our Free Tip Friday, the vibe is a lot different than our regular broadcast for Wednesday. Our broadcast for Wednesday is a little more structured, and of course we've got Brandon here to run the camera, and sometimes I have a guest sitting next to me. So the Free Tip Friday vibe is a lot different. But I did wanna mention, for those of you who are new to watching us, um, you can find us, all of these are archived over on our YouTube channel. And I know that sometimes at the beginning there's a lot of chitty chat and there's a lot of hey and how are you and conviviality and all of that kind of stuff, community chat, which is awesome. But I know that some of you are like, get me to the project, Richburg. I'm here to make something. So what you can do usually uh, about the first 15 minutes of the broadcast is usually chat, right? Um, if it's an older episode, go right to beadshop.com and go to that project, download the episode notes. Andrea does a wonderful job, as many of you know, um, outlining the episode. It's really like a handout that goes with the episode. So you can fast forward to the minute markers where the instruction is, and I think a lot of you will find that super helpful. So that's how that goes. Also, if you haven't already, go to our website, beadshop.com, and sign up for our newsletter. You know, Janice and I unveiled our brand new logo um, yesterday, day before yesterday, Wednesday. Um, Andrea is now using it in our newsletters, and Allie is gonna be using it on our upcoming lookbook 
for the tassel challenge, which is incredible. I had a little sneak peek and you guys really outdid yourselves. Um, and then on the 19th, that Wednesday, in just a couple weeks, Karen and I are doing a Facebook Live together and she's gonna unveil some really cool things about our new website that's coming. I promise it's super easy to use. You're gonna see some changes, but I think all of those changes uh, will be really great and easy for you guys to, um, to navigate. So um, it looks like I have some questions here, which is awesome. I'm going to scroll back a little bit. We have had some questions about, yes, going using end caps with kimono cord. Yes, um, Drea, she's like, oh, good. And Drea's here. I didn't even say, I'm all, who is that talking? Drea's over on YouTube. Thanks, bead sister. Yes. I've got those end caps right here, and we're going to talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about also some other um, uh, alternatives to kimono cord because you guys love kimono cord so much that we're out of it now. But never fear. Um, if you're watching this later, you've probably gotten it back in. Or if you're waiting on the um, uh, notification list, don't worry. I've um, just gotten a communication from our manufacturer. You know, it's manufactured back in Japan um, with traditional methods. And so it does, it's not one of those instant products that we can get back in, but I've got plenty on order and you'll see it, um, today's the seventh, so you'll see it back in stock in about a week. So sit tight. Um, I promise that a steady stream of kimono cord is coming. So thank you for your patience on that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn things around here and you're gonna look at my messy desk and I'm gonna show you uh, what we're going to be working on. Um, I've also had some uh, questions. I'm going to stand up and move the camera here. Um, I uh, had some questions um, about how we do our little leather um, wraps on our um, on the bundles of leather that you get from beadshop.com. Um, I think it was Cindy or I don't know, somebody special requested that. So I'm going to start off with that and show you how we do those. Um, and then I'm just gonna show you, just we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff today. Look, there you've got my glasses, you've got some kimono cord, we're good. Okay, that wasn't too bad, there we go. That looks good, I think all of the cords are out of the way. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Friday Vibes here on beadshop.com. Yes, yeah, Cindy Brooke. You were the asker. Great. Well, ask and ye shall receive. Um, at least sometimes here at Beach Up. <laughs> so, but I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out with showing you that. Sorry, the camera's moving a little bit, but I want to make sure that we're nice and straight and head on. There we go. Yep, you can see my messy desk. You can see my hands in the shot. Awesome. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to get the camera just a little bit closer to me. So everything is in my eye range. Drea, you know how that is when we're on camera working on things. <laughs> we need to get as close to my eyes as possible. Okay. Um, alrighty. So here we are, done, ready to go. Let me get my glasses on. Let me make some um, some uh, space here and it's great it's great to have everybody here you know what I I love our Fridays together I don't know if you guys love our Fridays as much as I do but for me I feel like it's a visit with my old friends and some new friends which is great and I feel it sets my weekend up for success for creative success you know I usually find something here uh, during uh, Free Tip Friday uh, that makes me want to create over the weekend. And I hope that you guys do too. Thank you so much for the love of uh, my new ring. If you guys, I'll mention this just real quick um, because we are getting ready to do some metal work here at Bead Shop and um, doing some broadcasts and doing some online classes and stuff like that that are going to focus around some of my spirit animal 
uh, metal smithing work. Um, and if you follow me over on my Insta, which is Bead Kate, B E A D Kate, K A T E, I post a lot of metalworking tips and stuff like that. And a lot of those also flow or will be flowing over to our beadshop.com Insta as well. Um, I will uh, show you, there's a little secret in this ring. I'm going to show you. And some of you may not know this. My mom will remember this. And you can see, let me get kind of tight here in the back of my ring. I know I'm hijacking this for just a second, but I want to show you guys what's back there. I don't know if you can see in the back how there is uh, a little window here, and you can see a penny peeking through, right? So I don't know if you guys uh, remember during World War II, I don't because I'm not that old, but my mom would uh, maybe remember even though she was born after World War II ended. Um, these are steel pennies that during the war, um, pennies were for the war effort, were no longer made out of copper, but were made from steel and um, just for a few years. And so I used that steel penny to raise the stone uh, to be uh, higher in the bezel. And so there's more info about that. But I thought it was kind of fun. A little penny window for your thoughts behind the ring. And, you know, talking about design and talking about making things that are uniquely yours or... I, I really, really, really encourage you um, to think about tiny details in your work. Whether it's things in your metalwork, because I know a lot of you are metal workers, have found me uh, in my bead world through my metalsmithing world. Um, but whether you're stringing a necklace, smithing a piece, think about making the whole package, right? So that there's a little hidden delight here in the back. Same thing with your clasps, you know, like with this, I'm wearing the... Um, the tracks bracelet. I'm going to take my watch off so you guys can see this a little bit better. The tracks bracelet from a few weeks back. All right, like this. Okay. Um, this tracks bracelet, and then this was the kimono cord bracelet from um, uh, from this week. But these little delights, this little like this trail ends piece, you know, that Janice did in her trails end that closure adding a little bit of chain, adding this Jardin ring. So thinking, you know, thinking about, I don't know, making it a visual feast or visually interesting, um, all parts of your piece, I think is, um, is, is really, really important. Um, no, these pennies are uh, a lot more common than you'd think. They're not very expensive at all. And it is maybe, someone said earlier in our, Cindy, you said earlier, about you know um, thanking our, our veterans and, and people of being of service, um, not only for our country, but for countries around the world. You know, maybe I did have Memorial Day on the brain when I made this. I don't know, it was just, I felt it was kind of the right thing, the cool thing to do. So I'm glad you guys love it as much as I do. Um, but again, think about the hidden treasures in your, um, in your, in your pieces and I think um, that will kind of start to as Janice likes to say elevate your work which is cool so let's start off by doing that wrap shall we wrapping that cord now I have some of you have seen um, in uh, what, what one of our most popular products on beadshop.com is what we call it's a lot of leather now it's a lot of leather what it is is it's the leather ends that happen or the leather lengths that happen between knots here's a knot where it's knotted now you'll notice when you buy leather from beadshop.com it comes in a four yard piece that has no knots so if we encounter a knot even at like three and three quarters of a yard we cut it away and we put it in a, uh, a bin and then that bin gets weighed out and we put them in grab bags called it's a lot of leather okay so the it's a, so this is a piece that i grabbed out of the it's a lot of leather because i'm going to make that bundle um, out of this one because it'll be easy for you to see 
This is distressed denim in two millimeter uh, leather. And so what we do when we get you the leather is we take it off the wall, we cut four yards, four yards with no knots, and we just spool it around our hands. So I'm gonna spool it around, spool it around, and someone was also asking what was the bracelet or the chain on the tracks bracelet. That is fancy pants. And it's fancy pants in copper. Um, those beloved links that I love on that one. So I'm going to come around. And then what you do is you kind of, once you've wound it, you kind of stop like this. And you go, okay, I've got this end here, this end here. I grab it close to the first end that I was started to wind. I get this end so I have, I don't know, this much, four inches, five inches or so, okay? And I wrap it. And I wrap. And I wrap. Usually I want to wrap around four times. Now all I do, I'm not wrapping it super tight, but all I do here is I bring this end that I've wrapped that I finished wrapping with, and I poke it underneath those four wraps. The fulfillment team is sometimes a lot faster than I am on this, but I'm pretty fast too. I'm doing this though kind of slowly so you can see it. See that there? Then I just push it through, and I pull it tight, and then we give it a tug like this. And that's it. And then we put it in your order. That's how we do it. Nothing too exciting. So coil, 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 wrap, 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 get that end, poke it through, give it a tug. That's it. Now you can work in our fulfillment department. It's the first thing people learn how to do when they fill is to wrap the leather. So that's it. Done and done. Then when you get it, you just undo it. I'll show you that one more time. See it's here. And you just wrap, I like wrapping about four times, but I think everybody has their own wrapping style a little bit, right? So that's like four, four and a half. Kind of smush it up. Loosen it up a little bit. And just worm it underneath there. And you don't have to do four. And this is the two millimeter. The two millimeter is kind of hard to do. And especially if you've done it several times, the leather starts to get soft. But see here, there it is. There's that little tail. Just pull it like this and give it, give it a little tug, and it's ready to go. My mom is mentioning over on uh, the Facebook feed. Um, it's very funny um, when she came uh, around Christmas. Uh, she came uh, not last year, but the year after, or the year before, uh, actually. And it was her job to spool leather. <laughs> and yeah, she hated it but she got it by the end but uh but that's like the first thing that we do so let's take a look you guys at um a couple of the things i want to show you i'm going to take this wrap bracelet off this kimono cord wrap bracelet and uh show you how i finished it it's going to be up if it's not already and i know drea is including it in the episode notes but it's i'm sorry i've got to get again get this close to my eyes so i can take it off Sorry. Um, uh, she's going to write it up as a project. So you guys will be able to see exactly what I used. Sorry, my fingers are so fumbly today. I'm getting it off here. I can see it. It's the beauty of a live broadcast. There we go. Here it is. Um, so what I did with this guy is I just did that single... Uh, row of the uh, checkmates tiles and the bugle beads, uh, Japanese bugles. So let me get a little bit tighter so you guys can see that. And then just on its own, this would be a fantastic bracelet, right? You could connect a clasp to that. You could do whatever you wanted. I pulled this Trax bracelet off the wall because I really felt like these guys kind of went hand in hand. Here's the Trax right here and I use the barrel knot with that and it's a project that I did on Facebook Live on Beach Hub Live so you can find all of the instructions and this is simply half tilas 
here with uh, 11 aught seed beads. And then I just came around and added uh, that fancy pants chain. Now this is that what we call the trails end closure. Janice did this closure. It's simply just a figure eight of leather that has been silk wrapped. Though you can silk wrap it, you can wire wrap it, whatever, but um, you could also connect it to that Jardin ring and then uh, maybe it would be this side because that side's a little bit smaller, that Jardin ring, and then you could close it up with the button. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, choose your own adventure projects, um, you know, putting all of these different um, techniques together. Okay, so that looks really good. Andrea is saying that it'll be up early next week. This is called, I named it this one Night Blossom and you'll find it in the kimono cord projects coming soon. And so what I used, I used the ivory, um, uh, the black and ivory waves um, kimono cord, and you can see instead of um, macrame, I um, silk wrapped, but you could also macrame these sections like I did in the other one, the safflower blossom. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna confess right here, I had to finish it fast, so I silk wrapped because I was under the gun. I had to get it done. Drea's like, where's that project? And I'm like, oh my God, give me a minute. So uh, instead of doing all of the macrame, I just did some quick, quick silk wraps and I think it looks amazing. So if I do say so myself. Okay, so that's this one. So let's take a look though. Um, I know that some of you have asked, Andrea was saying, what about end caps and kimono cord? And so I have, we have a lot of different end caps. Um, one of my favorites is this hold me end cap. And those of you who saw my Viking knit episode way, way back, um, I don't know, it might've been last year, it might've been the year before, I can't remember now. We've been doing this live broadcast for almost three years, so I can't, I can't remember when I'm doing it. Um, but this one, we call this cap the Hold Me end cap, and it's a classic. Uh, it's something we used to carry way back in the day when we were a brick and mortar, and I got it back in because I just adore it, adore it, adore it. And it looks handmade, handcrafted. Um, the plating is beautiful, really strong on there, and so I think um, you'll good. Oh, Andrea said, I just need to know how many Jardin rings I used on the Night Blossom. Uh, Drea, I used one. There you go. Put it in. I just used one. There we go. One uh, flower patch button, and I think that's it. Great. Now we don't have to have a meeting later. Perfect. So, um, okay, so... Uh, there's the caps. So I started to think, I was like, well, I, I want to do something a little different than what we have been doing with the kimono cord. I mean, it's pretty easy to, you know, to kind of ladder with it or whatever, or, you know, just stick a, a cap on it. And I'm going to show you that in a second, how I do that. Um, but the team, the design team has been getting pretty darn creative over on our bead table Facebook group um, with this stuff. And um, Faye posted a really incredible um, necklace that she did that has a disc for the center. Um, Danielle did a really beautiful one with the mustard cord. And then Allie sneaks in yesterday and did, I don't even know how to describe it, but Drea will put it into episode notes. Um, it's such a beautiful um, wrap that's stitched and stuff like that. Um, I, uh, of course, this is tangled because I haven't touched it since yesterday or the day before when I was working with it. Um, and so here's the, I'm going to kind of get in a little bit tighter so you can see what I did here with the kimono cord. And so uh, those of you may remember uh, some of our classic projects. This one's called Color Study, and this is a classic Janus right here. And, um, and she used, we call this chain our wheat chain, and it comes in a lot of different finishes. 
And so I um, was stitching in and out, stitching in and out. It's just such a gorgeous thing. Oh, and I just saw it at the corner of my eye. Kim, also from the design team, is going to post hers this weekend with the kimono cord. I can't wait. I always, when I, uh, when I tell the design team, I'm like, no pressure, you guys. They just deliver. Those four ladies are, I don't know what we do without them. They're incredible. Um, but I was thinking, you know, there's got to be a way to kind of mix this with metal. So I took a nod from Janice's color study, and we have it kind of in this gunmetal color. Um, this one was her first one, kind of the classic color study um, that started it all. You can see there's two lengths of chain that have been uh, laddered in between um, the leather. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that same thing, but with kimono cord. So you can see what I did here. I used the concentric circles, and you'll remember Janice and I talking about making a loop uh, with the kimono cord. What I did was, and what Janice was showing you, and it was a really neat trick, and I didn't do it on here, so you can see a little bit of the interior of the cord. What Janice does is she neatens up the end by pushing the end of the kimono cord. You can use your, your plier to do this or your tweezers to do this. And she tucks in the ends, which is really, really nice. And it takes a little bit of uh, uh, finishing to do, so I'm not going to do it here, but it really makes the end nice and clean. And then, so it kind of looks like this, right? So it's tucked. There we go. I've got this one that's tucked. And then for that loop, I bring it through and I stitch it right stitch it up stitch 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 and so that's what I did with this one is it a little dark Trish let me see if I can um, if I can um, make it a little bit brighter bear with me here just a second maybe that'll do something maybe maybe not maybe this will also do something there we go. Is that better or is that too bright? Let me know what you guys think. If it's too blown out or too bright, I can pull it back down. Let's try that. Hopefully that's better. Okay. Sorry. I know it's the light. You've got I've got the lights and everything on in the studio, but it's uh it's uh sometimes with this dark cord, um the camera adjusts like this. So what I did was I stitched, 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 stitch, and then I uh, silk wrapped. And I silk wrapped using um, the kimono cord. I mean, not the kimono cord, Chinese knotting cord, CKC, which is this, okay? And the, uh, I used the 0.4 millimeter here, um, but you could use any size, all right? And so that has just been silk wrapped, though you could macrame or whatever. Then what I did, I'll show you, and I'm going to just do this with this piece of cord here um, so I don't want to start the whole thing. Um, I used the point uh, 1.5 millimeter cord. Oops, I'm all tangled. I used the 0.5 millimeter cord for here, but you could also use a skinnier cord if you wanted. This one is the one millimeter here. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to pretend that I've done all of this. And I'm just going to do it with a short piece. And I'm just going to clip it here. Okay, so let's just pretend that that's all done. Let's see if I can get it all together here. Okay, like so. So then, uh, you know what, before I even added this leather, no, I did. You can see under here, I've silk wrapped it. I also silk wrapped the leather in right here, okay? So let's pretend that this is all a silk wrap right up here, all right? Then I got these strands out of the way. And you're asking, well, how long did you make everything? Well, I don't know. I used some scraps so I don't really know, long enough to make at least a single wrap. And then I can make it longer by adding a ring or adding some macrame and then doing another section of something down here. So I'm just letting this evolve, right? So I don't, I, I, I don't know. 
I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. But enough, enough so it makes one wrap. So this little scrap of kimono cord is probably about nine inches or so. And then this scrap of leather is at least a couple of yards, okay? So then I went over to our chain bin and I got some chain scrap, okay? And so here is the chain in the, uh, the wheat chain in the antique brass, okay? So there's that. And uh, I'm just gonna grab this KO right here, and I hope that my sharps are sitting right here. They are, okay? And so I'll just stitch with that because that's what I have here. But you use uh, whatever works for you, whatever colors you like. So again, it's silk wrapped under there, it's all set. Now with the wheat chain, and you can do this with some different chain. We've got Rolo chain, all kinds of stuff that you could use. I used wheat because that's what inspired me first. But use a Rolo chain, a round chain, whatever it is you want, okay? So you can see how on this wheat chain, see how it's nice and, I don't know if you can see that there, that little end, but there's a nice loop on that end. So that's where I'm gonna ladder first. And I'm gonna make sure and clean up this other end. Yeah, it's good, it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to string my needle, or thread my needle rather, and again, I'm using KO, but you can use any skinny thread you want. Um, Hana is one of my favorites, Hana and Pebble. That's, my, that's one of my go-tos. Um, and I don't, for stitching like this, I don't really wax, I'll be honest. You could wax a little bit, on the end if you wanted it to help you to string that thread or um, string the, the thread through the eye of the needle. So I could wax it a little bit to stiffen it up a bit. Then I'll grab my needle. I'm going to needle the thread, not thread the needle, which is placing the eye of the needle down on the thread. See how that just went through? I don't know. my that needle stringing threading gods are with me today. Now underneath here, once I have made my loop, let me just stitch that in real quick. Once I've stitched this loop in, I will do this with a long piece of KO, right? And I will just continue to use the KO as I move along. So see how I'm stitching here? There we go. And I'd really stitch it well. And of course I'd come in and clip away these ends um, there so it's nice and tight in there. And then I would stitch it down to where I want my chain to start. That's when then, gang, I would come in with my leather and it wouldn't be a loop, but it's a loop now because I don't want to cut it at this very second. And I'd silk wrap this whole thing, okay? So that the KO thread is captured, the leather is captured, uh, this is all nice, and it's nice and tightly stitched, so it's nice and tapered. So I'm gonna start everything about right here, okay? So I'm gonna come back in Clip all that closed. Let's pretend that's all silk wrapped, right? Let's pretend it's silk wrapped though and that the leather is in position. There we go. Now I'm gonna to start to ladder with this chain. So let me get kind of up close and personal here so you guys can really see what I'm doing, okay? Now you can, um, you can, um, whoops, sorry, let me get that in the space. You can attach this to a board if you'd like, um, but I'm just going to uh, hold it in my hand so you guys can see, okay? So I'm gonna start with this thread. See how it's coming out right here? You can see that pretty close. I'm gonna grab my chain through the needle of my thread. Can you see that? String it on and tuck that chain 
just right there and let me stitch it through then I'll get my hand out of the way you guys and you'll be able to see what I'm doing there we go so see this I'm going to put it on the table so you guys can see and I'll point it out with the pointer and I'll get nice and tight so you guys can see that so I've taken my first stitch from right here my leather is here I've stitched through that top link of the chain and I've gone through my kimono cord. Okay, now I'm going to add my kimono cord, I mean my chain, to the other side. Okay, and yeah, the leather is two separate pieces, and you can see that in this one. There's a leather on this side, there's a leather on this side, and the end is here and here under the wrap. Okay. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to get my other piece of chain, and I'm going to slide that through. So just like we're doing infinity stitch, you guys, and remember the first of every anything is kind of a pain in the you know what, right? Uh, it just comes, I'm just going to stitch this in. I'm not going to go around the leather at all. So I'm going to go through the chain, back through the kimono cord, and out the other chain. So the leather does not go through the loop. Beth, it just ends, there's just a piece of leather laid across here and a piece of leather laid across here. If it was a loop, I could just clip it away, but I don't want any leather. Here, I just want the cord, if that makes sense. Whoops, I, now I just threw it on the floor. Good job, me. Okay, and there's a lot of business going on here, so you want to make sure that your cord doesn't get through, your leather doesn't get through that loop. So just kind of bear with it as you're going. Now I'm just going to tighten that up, and so see how now, and I try and work as close up here to the leather where the leather comes out of the silk wrap as I can. I'm leaving a little bit of air here so you guys can actually see. Okay, so we've got to, um, we've got the kimono cord at this point around and silk wrapped with the leather underneath and I've stitched the top of the wheat chain in. And it could be any chain, again, it doesn't have to be the wheat chain, okay? So, <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go under, just like infinity stitch, like I did with the, um, with the wrap, the kimono wrap. Now I can't see it. Just like I did here with this, with this infinity stitch, it's the same thing, okay? So I come under the leather, and now this is my first real stitch. Under the leather, over the leather, through the chain, back through the chain on the other side, Bring my leather in. Over the leather. Back through the chain at the same place, but as I come out on the other side, I kind of come out at an angle. And I wanna stop and show you where my original stitch was. My original stitch was here. I've come through, gone back, and instead of exiting where that original stitch is, I'm just angling it down to start my next. And you know, if you don't get this perfect, it doesn't really matter, right? As long as it's stitched in. So now I'm gonna go under the leather, back through that same thread path that I had just come out of, and the wheat chain, the wheat chain is kind of the hardest to do this with. The wheat chain 
it, there's like a little X there, and there's kind of a little opening in that X, that's what you aim your needle for. If you're doing simple chain, like a Rolo chain or something that's just a link to link, it's very easy to bring it back and forth through. But the wheat chain, you kind of have to poke a little bit with your needle. So now I'm gonna go back through that same thread path that I did, but instead of coming out here, I'm gonna again angle it down, angle it, I can see it, I tell you. There we go, I'm poking around a little bit with my needle, there it is. You can see it comes out when it's right, it's right, and then you pull it through. Trying not to get it on my clamp. Okay, and make sure that you're pulling both through so that your thread is nice and even, that you don't have any little bubbles and stuff. I'm sorry my hand's in the way, but let me untangle this thread and then I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see it. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna go one more time over the leather, back through that same thread path, Essentially, you are infinity stitching with your kimono cord. Pretend your kimono cord is a bead, right? That's, that's all you're really doing. There we go. I can see that, see how you can see I've got a little spare room there, which I don't like. I'm going to come in and use my awl to help pull that thread a little tighter. Because there we go. Not too tight, but we want it, we don't want to see a little bubble of, of thread there. So I'm going to have to get my awl, now pull that one tighter, and now come in. There you go. Okay, so you're going to continue on and continue on until you've got something like this. Okay, let me get this a little bit bigger. I saw someone ask about the, um, the uh, kimono cord order that's coming in. It's the same styles. We're going to have the same styles coming in, um, but Janice and I are looking at adding a few new patterns. Um, we're noticing that we're missing a few color groups, so we're gonna add uh, a few more. Um, so don't worry, we're gonna get some more in. And Karen's saying it, it may be easier to start with a simple chain, for sure. You also may wanna take a look at the color study um, handout. It's really, it, it, it looks a lot harder than it is. What you, what you want to do when you get the chain, when you get the wheat chain, you can really see, and I'm going to try and get real tight up on this so you guys can see that link. You can see how the wheat chain almost makes a little Y shape as it crosses. That little Y, you can see air through it. It's like a little tunnel that's, and see how I've got the all through there, that's where you go, that's where you go through, okay? So once you have your chain in hand, or if you have a scrap of wheat chain already at home, take a look at it, and do a little sample, you know, um, you know, get yourself your kimono cord, or get a heavier kind of cloth cord that you might have, and just, and just try it out, just do a little practice sample. I was also thinking um, in my in my um, designing uh, that you know what could we use to replace the kimono cord since we're out and some of you may want to be trying this technique and I thought well what have we made that's round okay so I went to the wall our design wall. And I grabbed projects that were round, okay? 
I grabbed, this is our For the Guys, that round braid that I did, um, uh, this round braid with deerskin lace, that's round. You could make one of these cords and poke your needle through. You could get a needle through there for sure because it's, if I open it up, you guys can see the cord underneath that. That would look T terrific, laddered um, next to that, okay? Uh, you could also use, look at this, you guys. Remember from a few weeks ago, Emily's herringbone? Look at the herringbone. If you look at it closely, I'm gonna grab a needle here. You can see there is a wide open space that you could get your needle through like that and through your wheat chain. Can you see that? That would work amazingly well, just like that, right? Laddering back and forth, right? You'd have your, we'd have our leather right there, okay? Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be a cool experiment to try out. I also grabbed, some of you guys may remember, one of our most recent things, and I did a little bit of it. Remember that round braid I did a while back? That would look, I think it would look incredible with I want the two millimeter, I want the heavier. I braided it with the two mil, or is it two mil? Uh, no, it's 1.5 is what this braid is done with. And you could ladder it like this, right? This braid, the way I've done it, you can certainly get a needle through there, just like that, and through the Y part of that chain. That would, I think that would look amazing, amazing, amazing to do. This round braid, um, it was on Free Tip Friday, um, just a few, uh, not Free Tip Friday, sorry, Facebook or Bean Shop Live, just a couple of weeks ago. And this is a super, super easy braid. And you can look it up, get the episode notes that Drea did. It's really easy. It's just a four strand round braid. So it couldn't be easier for you to do, okay? Um, and so I think this would look terrific. I love it. Uh, you could ladder some beads along the outside of this too, okay? And come around, it'd be really cool. Yeah, cording, sure, any kind of cord. Sherry is saying, what about like pillow cording or you know, that kind of thing. You can use any kind of cord that you like will will work well with this with this trick. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this guy out. I now I want to move on to because we're getting what time is it? How are we doing? I'm doing okay. I want to get to the end caps. And again, this free tip Friday, the vibes on free tip Friday, you guys, are a lot different than Facebook Live, right? I kind of vi kind of riff off different projects and stuff. So I know I may be going kind of fast for some of you, but the the free the free tip Friday is always available. And if you go back and you study some of our projects, you can always email me, Kate at beadshop.com or uh, shout out to Drea, uh, info at beadshop.com, and we'll be happy to link the right um, skill builders and stuff for you to look at. But if you go to our website at beadshop.com, you go to projects, you'll see all of these projects listed. You'll also see um, our um, Bead Shop Live broadcasts there, which have the episode notes for each one. So it's really a deep dive into kind of, uh, I don't know, studying different techniques and stuff. Um, and so here on Free Tip Friday, we just like to mash it up for sure. So you can see here, the way I started that braid, I started it around a piece of 24 gauge leather, okay? This 24, I'm sorry, 24 gauge wire, sorry. And I am going to, I'm gonna put a bead cap on the end of this, 
then I'm going to put a bead cap on the end of the kimono cord because it's kind of the same. See how that bead cap, look at that, how that hold me bead cap just nestles. And then I've got two strands of the wire coming out of it. Okay, now I've been kind of playing around with it. This is how I attached the, when I was doing the braid, I attached uh, this leather to the board by clamping the wire onto the board with the clamper. Um, but I, uh, so now I'm going to use my nylon jaw, what we like to call the wire straightener, to straighten that out. And then I can just make a wire wrap loop at this end. I'm going to treat both of these wires as if they were one because I want a little bit of a heavier wire at the end and I don't want too much wrap. We have a skill builder on bead shop and I do so much. Wire is my spirit animal. Okay. And that's it just that's how it is. <laughs> so, but I do a lot of wire demos for that. So I'm going to bend at a right angle. I'm going to do this Kate speed because I don't I have a few more things I want to get to. But you can practice practice. Sorry, I got out of frame there. Up and over with both strands of wire. Okay? Both strands. I'm going to complete this loop. I'm not going to put anything inside it. Sorry, let me get a little bit bigger so I stay in frame. I'm not going to put anything inside it right now. I'm going to come around. See how I'm wrapping with both ends? Just like it's one wire. I'm going to go down from the bottom of the loop to the top of the bead cap. Then I'm going to come up. Okay. Ta-da! Like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to clip away my extra using my beloved Zeron cutters. And I'm going to dip that little end right in. Now, what I'm going to do, and again, totally riffing off this, right before I went on air, I grabbed these rings because we've been talking about them. These are our coiled jump rings, and I grabbed them in the oval because why not? I love the oval. This is also when you guys, that fancy pants chain that I used on the Trax bracelet, that's when this would come in handy too. You don't have to grab, I grabbed the Jardin ring again because I'm kind of in a Jardin ring mood lately, but you could use this fancy pants chain that has this flat link and this two part link. You could do that same thing here at the end, all right? And we do carry the hold me caps in two different sizes. And honestly, I'm not sure what the exact dimensions are, but they're all on the website. We carry it in a small and in a large. Okay, this is the small one that I'm working with. So these coiled rings, you kind of have to be careful. You, Since they're coiled, um, they could break a little bit easier than regular jump rings if you go back and forth too much because it's an actual little coil. It's not an actual coil, but it's a texture that's into that jump ring. So if you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, then uh, it, may, it may break. So you just want to just be aware of it. And I know, yes, I'm using brass, and I know I wire wrapped with copper, but it's mixed metals Friday, or at least that's what I'm saying it is. And I hope this fits. I didn't even check it before I went on air, but let me make sure that it does. Let me open the ring wide so I can get that, that in there. Sorry, let me put that down, put this on. Come on, who's the boss of this ring? Don't fight it, Richburg, just open it up a little bit more. There you go. There we go, really open it. Get that Jardin ring in. And close that sucker. Don't fight your metal, just ease up on the death grip on those pliers, you guys, and just take a breath. There we go. It's a little crooked though, let me fix it. That looks better. There we go. So there's that ring. Now I could come in and I also grab these swivel clasps, which I dig a lot. Um, so I'm going to put a swivel clasp on the end. And I don't know, this is a very unfinished 
kind of rough example. If I were going to do um, that stitching thing with the chain, maybe I'd just stitch it along the side here and not do another piece of leather on the outside, right? And I would just come in and go back and forth and, and ladder that in. I don't know. That would work too. Um, there is probably room to shove a uh, length of cord on either side of this one. And then I'd probably just wire wrap it underneath um, uh, to get that in there. So, but this is a way, um, I think it's, oh, that's not closed at all. Who closed that ring? That was a poor job. There we go. You got to really hear it click. There we go. Gosh, and this one isn't closed either. Come on now. As I always say, a jump ring is either closed or it's open. It's not almost closed. There you go. You really got to make it nice. Okay. Um, so I think that's a great kind of uh, cord substitute if you don't have the, your kimono cord yet. Okay. Now I know I promised you um, uh, a closure uh, for that... Uh, an end cap for this kimono cord. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I would tackle it, okay, depending on what you're doing, all right? So I think I'll start, let me get a cap. I'm going to get, maybe I'll get this silver one, and I'll work on this pink so it'll be kind of bright. I've got a few minutes to do this. This won't take me long. Now, you want to make sure that you've got some some room in here with this, uh, you know, this, you can see this is, I think it's about a 13 millimeter on the, or eight millimeter I see is the small. So you can really, the cord compacts down really nicely like this, okay? But first, what I want to do is I, I want to stitch like maybe a little loop or something in here so I have something to work around okay so let me get again my trusty sharps needle my trusty KO thread and if you're not a stitcher or you're not a sewer you're gonna have to get familiar it's okay just get your KO it's just like going through beads except you're going through fabric right Let's go ahead and needle that thread. And I'm gonna come in. I could tuck these ends in again nicely like Janice did the other day, but I'm just gonna go for it because of time constraints. I'm gonna put my needle in so I have a nice tight um, bend. And I can even, so that I don't struggle later, I can put a piece of wire in there. And I think I used 24 gauge before. I'm going to try 22 gauge here. Okay. I'm going to cut this. Give myself enough. That's probably enough. I'll put that in there. Then I'm just going to ignore it. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch. Maybe I'll start over here on this end. Take a couple of stitches in place to secure your thread. I'm using this thread doubled as if it were one and I did not wax it. Um, you could have a little light waxing on it, might help you to control it, but it's not necessary. Get that trail off, or that tail off, and then do another stitch. Okay. Now I want to kind of smush or scoot or tighten this end in a bit so it'll sit nicely in the cap. So I'm going to stitch across and stitch across. Do another couple of loops here or another couple of stitches in place. 
come on who's the boss of this thread me there we go good pull it tight now I'm going to start to kind of cinch this in a bit and I don't want to go too low because all of this needs to go underneath the cap right can you see that so I'm just going to come in untangle my thread from this wire there we go and you guys I want you I've seen some chatter on both the YouTube and the Facebook feed today about you know oh this looks kind of hard or this looks you know I need to practice or, you know get confidence or whatever what I the way I teach my metal working classes and I teach a lot of this in the beat my beating classes as well you know get yourself a little piece of cord you know don't try this out for the first time on on the project right that you're going to be putting it on to give yourself a little bit of practice then you're not emotionally attached to the outcome of what you're practicing on right you can just practice and then you can go you know what that's not right i'm going to cut it up or i'm going to put it aside and i'm going to try again practice 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 uh you know a couple of times and then you'll be ready you'll be ready to go so see how i clipped all of that messiness away you could also use a little fray check or a little clear nail polish or something on there to help it um not fray but since this is polyester um it's going to stay nicely um i'm going to give one more like stitch through here to kind of try and cinch things up just a little bit more but I don't want to get it too cinched because I do want to fill that cap with, um, with the cord. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to tie off my thread here. I'm going to make that loop. I'm going to go through once. go through twice, pull both knots or both strands as if they were one. I'm going to have one little bubble of thread if I don't pull them both nicely. There we go. Tighten that up. Yep, I see that little thread bubble, but that's going to be underneath. There it goes. It's going to be underneath. I could add a little dot of glue there if I wanted to make sure that my um, knot isn't going to come apart but for now I'm just going to clip it. Now we're going to add this end cap and the end cap you can see has a pretty big hole right like this okay and I'm gonna go in and slide this on I need my plier to help me though and this compacts and you just coax it there we go right into your cap can you see how look at that look at what a nice closure that makes. I'm going to get my hands out of the way and get this kind of tight so you guys can see it. Okay. I think it looks great. And you'll always have, like, I don't know if you'll always use the full yard of your kimono cord. And it is, I mean, it's expensive. It's a handmade fancy cord is what it is. So even this little short piece like this, you could put end caps on both ends where's another where's my other I'll use silver because I don't know what oh I used my other one already I'll put this on you could put them on the ends and this would be a great 
part in in a wrap right you could um, macrame over this or you could stitch beads or you could do whatever but this could just be a, a section in one of your wrap bracelets right so this it's not very long it's short but it doesn't matter you can use every bit of this this is less than six inches now right so it doesn't it doesn't matter you know every little bit of this even if this were shorter three inches how fun that would be with a little bit of macrame on the inside. Now, all we're going to do with this end is I'm going to wire wrap it again. Now, I think I'm going to wire wrap this and make it just a single wrap so you guys can see how I do that. I'm going to bend it, bend uh, at a right angle, one still going up straight. This is in our skill builders. Up and over. If I want, I can make the loop a little bit heavier by wrapping that loop. Sorry, my hands are a little bit fumbly. And you know what? That's not the end I want it to be. I want to be doing this with that long end. So that's okay. We're going to come in. You're the boss of the wire. You're going to just Smooth that wire back out. There's a little funny place there that we're going to just smush. There we go. Let's make sure I do that with my longer wire, not my shorter wire. Bend at a right angle. Up and over the top. I'm going to go up and over the top twice times to get that loop a little bit heavier because this is 22 gauge I'm working with. Now, sorry, I'm out of the up there. So now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to wrap and have these two together. One wrap nicely below the other. I'm using my bent chain nose for this. Keeps my hand in a very natural position. There we go. Clip away my excess. And neaten everything up. Yeah, with this cord, I would keep every little precious scrap. There we go. And again, this kimono cord doesn't come with any knots. We send you a nice full length. So there's no waste at all for you. We cut it very carefully, measure it very carefully. So it's all perfect. There we go. So there's the loop. You guys can see that. Right? And so now I could connect that to, I don't know, to whatever. I could even connect it to just a regular piece of chain or, I don't know, something. You know, whatever. But that or a clasp, right? You could do it with a jump ring or you could put your clasp in there before you closed it up, if that makes sense. Okay. Oh my goodness. I hope I'm tired. I don't know if you guys are tired, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> so many creative ideas have come out of our session together today. I also wanted to mention all of those little scraps of your kimono cord. Keep them in some baggies. You know, we're going to send them to you in baggies like this. Keep them in baggies so um, so you can uh, so they stay nice and fresh when you use if you if until you uh, get to use them. If you have it kind of floating around in your stash, it can get a little what we like to call around here shop worn. Okay. So um, and the rolls we try and get our spools of kimono cord. Um, at least um, 
They're coming now in about 10 yard uh, spools or so. We always ask them, that's why when they make our cord for us, because we're so exacting, they make it for us and try and have as long of a piece uh, as possible. So um, you can always, if you're um, ordering it and you want a really long interrupted piece, just add it in your episode notes and we will um, do our best to send you um, an uncut long length. I think that we say in the copy that we do at least a continuous three yard piece, but we've been seeing that it's a nice, that they're really nice long pieces. So you can um, you can always communicate us via the um, the episode notes, okay? And, and I, I really, really want to mention um, that I, I, I want you to take these tips that I'm sharing with you today and I want you to apply them how you want to apply them and you know baby steps I have been doing this making jewelry since I'm going to date myself since 1992 and before that since I was a child I learned how to sew a button onto a shirt. I was probably four or five years old, okay? So needles and thread are very second nature to me, and I know it shows when I make this, okay? Or when I, um, when I show you what I'm doing. But try not to get so worked up about the result of the piece, and I want you to be really present in the practice that you're doing. You know, practice a couple of these. Like if I didn't love this, all I would do is I'd get my wire cutters, I'd clip this off, I'd take the end cap back out, I'd shove another piece of wire underneath there, and I'd try it again, you know? It's okay. So don't, I, I don't, I, I don't want you to worry about the result so much as just the practice. It's kind of like yoga right? We are always practicing yoga. We never achieve perfection, or at least my downward dog is never quite right, okay? So uh, that being said, let me move this camera around, and we will, um, will, uh, will uh, log off, okay? Um, let me move, move this around. Let me stand up and get the camera get the camera over so you guys can see me and I can see you. There we go. Bear with me here. There we go. Here I here I am. Let's get that tight. Okay. Make sure that this is nice and even. Come on. Sorry. There we go. My hand didn't want to tighten that up. There we go. Is that going to stay there? Oh, you can see the, the foam on the side of the wall. I need to move it. There we go. Our sound foam. There we are. Shoo. I'm also a little crooked, but that's nothing new. There we go. All right. All righty. So, you guys, great job. Um, you know, play around with, as I say, play around with these techniques. Take a look at some of our different wraps and stuff that we have. You know, I want you to start thinking about wrap bracelets as little chunks of um, component parts, right? So this wrap here, the one that I did on Wednesday, this loop, you could connect this loop now to this piece here with the end cap with just some wire wrapping or a jump ring or whatever. Think about all of these pieces as components that you can put together. You know, if you're new to making wrap bracelets or making things like that, our Tricks to Laddering um, uh, section on beadshop.com is a great way to start. Start making just a simple wrap and graduate yourself up from there. There's so much learning on the site. You'll, you'll get with it. You'll get better and better. 
So uh, I'm just checking to see. Oh, I see some birthdays. Happy birthday. It's Sarah's birthday and it's Nancy's birthday next week. Happy birthday, dear friends, dear ladies. It's awesome. I want you to have a really great, safe, fantastic, uh, I don't know, fun uh, holiday. I don't know. Treat yourself to something kind of fun. Um, let me turn this brightness down just a little bit. There we go. So I'm not so blown up. Whoops. Now it's super dark. Sorry. My big finger. There we go. I think that's better. A little bit better. Um, uh, so that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote for Free Tip Friday. Um, I um, Next week, we've got a fun show on Wednesday. Janice, of course, has outdone herself again with a really beautiful lariat. We've got some new stuff coming, so stay tuned to your newsletter. Right now, this weekend, today's the 7th of June, already, uh, 7th of June, 2019. Uh, if you've opened your newsletters, you know that we're having a really great special this whole weekend on chain and caps and cones and metal beads and Ceylon, I think it is. Um, and so uh, those are already marked down on the website. You just go shop, they're already marked down. We do have some specials going on, some coupon specials that you can stack with those. Those are also on the front page of the website. Um, so you'll be saving up to 35% off on everything, which is amazing. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Have a great creative weekend. I think this started us off great, started us off right. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you on Wednesday for Bead Shop Live. And then the following week, don't forget, you guys, on the, I think it's the 16th of June. I want to make sure that's right. Saturday, June 16th. If you're anywhere in the vicinity of Redwood City, California, Emily and I are going to be having open studio right here at the bead shop offices. Okay. Emily's going to be here. We're doing a fabulous make and take. Um, you can come see all the tools. I'm going to demo stuff. It's going to be good times. All of the info is on the front page of our website, but we'll be here, I think it's from 10 to 3 on Saturday the 15th. No need to RSVP. You just show up, and if you want to jump into that make and take, you can do that at any time. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I will see you guys on Wednesday for Bead Shop Live. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon.